guys, I'm Judy the Orange Huntress and welcome or welcome back to my channel where we bring the hunt home and the wild inside. Today, the day my video comes out is my anniversary, 14 years to the man of my dreams. So I thought I'd make him a venison wellington because he deserves it. This is the meat we're working with, venison backstrap. Doesn't get any better than this, unless it's maybe a tenderloin. So I'm gonna show you how I make venison wellington. Venison wellington has been made by my brother-in-law for Christmases over the past few years, and it is always amazing. It is a great dish to impress just about anyone, and that is definitely something that we try and do with all of our friends. It takes a bit of time to get ready, so be aware of that, but I'm going to give you some great tips along the way to hopefully make it as easy as possible. I cut my back strap in half, rinsed and dried it, and then seasoned both sides with salt and pepper. Pop about a tablespoon and a half of olive oil in a pan and heat that up over medium-high heat. Then put your back strap on. You want to cook it for two minutes each side so that it locks in the juices. Grab your food processor and blend 700 to 800 grams of mushrooms, whatever kind you want. I used white and cremini. You want it to be a pasty consistency. Before you blend, you can add your thyme and garlic and onion, or you can wait until you put it in your pan. Be sure to add olive oil before you add your mushrooms. Press down your mushrooms like this so that it's able to cook off that moisture and get all that liquid out of your mushrooms so it can be a paste like this. It normally takes five to eight minutes and should make this sound when it's ready. Now that our mushrooms are set aside to cool, we're gonna grab our grainy mustard and coat our back strap with it. I used two tablespoons per piece and you wanna do both sides. I ended up putting it in the fridge overnight and did the prosciutto wrap the next day. Just for time-wise, that's what worked best for me. Take a couple pieces of saran wrap, cellophane, whatever you call it where you're from, overlap them and Put out your prosciutto. I ended up getting mine cut at the deli and I think I won't next time. I have used pre-packaged prosciutto before and I prefer it. It just falls apart a little bit less. So put your venison backstrap on that and spread out your mushrooms now that everything is nice and cold and ready to go. It looks a little weird like a meat log or something but the taste is well worth the weird looks. So I flipped it over with my spatula and did the other side and uh, it turned out great. And here is the best part, rolling it up. If you've ever rolled or seen somebody roll a Christmas log roll, like one of those cakes, it just reminded me of this. So you're not actually touching it, you're letting the saran wrap do all the work and it works beautifully. Tuck it in. Hold both ends and roll it up just like this, nice and tight. And then you can set it in your fridge. For this next step, grab your puff pastry. You gotta make sure that it's thawed or else it won't roll out. Just saying, from personal experience. And then get your meat log from the fridge. You should have had it in there overnight or for at least a couple hours. Dampen the edges of your puff pastry before you start to pinch it together or else it won't stick. So I'm pinching it here. It's not pretty, but it works. Or you can try using a fork, but be sure that your edges have been dampened before this step. And before you seal it, be sure to cut off any extra pastry. Wrap your Wellington log back up in that saran wrap, just like you did with the prosciutto. Make it nice and tight and put it in your fridge overnight or in your freezer for at least one hour. I started making some potatoes for my mash and cutting up some Brussels sprouts for my pan fried Brussels. Now this is where everything comes to life. Put some parchment on a pan and you're going to grab two egg yolks, whisk them together and then cover your beautiful Wellingtons completely in egg wash. You're going to cook your Wellingtons for 50 minutes 
at 425 degrees. And here it is. I let this beauty rest for 10 to 20 minutes before I cut into it and my goodness, I am so happy with the results. My family devoured it and it was just so much fun to make. Be sure to check out the description box for this amazing recipe and for this beautiful berry sauce I used. If you enjoyed this recipe today and you want to see more like it or more hunting your DIY content, Click like and subscribe and I'll catch you next Wednesday.